Hi guys, welcome back to my project life process for my camping trip. This is part two of a four part video. So if you haven't seen part one yet, I will link it right here so you can go back and check it out. And uh, this one is going to pick up quite abruptly and uh, here it is. And I have this really cute camp uh, like tent icon from the same planner stamp set that's from Lawn Fawn. I only have one planner stamp set and it's from Lawn Fawn and it was free. I have a couple more, but I'm giving them to my friend Stephanie because she always gives me stuff. So I have to give her some stuff too. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, what am I spelling out here? Campground chic is what I'm spelling out here. Back to those black Kelly Perky letter stickers. And I do like to use the same letter stickers and sometimes in different colors, right? But using the same font throughout a spread or several spreads, if, if you've got an event that spans several different pages, really helps pull together a project, especially my project life tends to be very mishmashed uh, and and um, like I could, I don't really have a particular color scheme. And so therefore anything that I can use that repeats will help the page look a little bit less random. Uh, but I do like the random look. It's, it's kind of my, my preferred look for Project Life is to have it be pretty random and not too matchy matchy at all. Look at this cute little line of board of uh, hearts. It's like a little cute border stamp. I love that. So I'm just going to use my my uh, Misty here. I love how tiny the Misty is. I do have the Tim Holtz mini stamp platform too. And I do like it, but this is just so tiny. It fits so much better on my workspace and it's easy to grab it. I keep them both on hand because sometimes I do use them both. I'm just checking to make sure that that ink is going to go okay on the card and it does. Just sacrificed a card I didn't think I'd use. And here I'm using red Mama Elephant ink. It is called Apple. And that pigment ink is a little bit harder to clean. So uh, as you can see, things are getting messy <laughs> on my stamp platform, especially. I thought about writing on this photo and I decided not to. I was gonna put like, okay and not okay because I'm wearing actually thong flip flops. And so I have my toes. <laughs> Oh, it was uncomfortable and looked really cringy. Um, my daughter is wearing nice roots socks with her Birkenstocks and she looks very hip with hers and I look like a bit of a dork with my uh I think I've got Rilakkuma fuzzy socks and uh thong flip-flops so this next card is uh, basically just the card uh and I just wrote we had a great view of other people's messy campsites and then I wrote below the photo we kept our curtains closed so I did take one picture out the back side of the camper it was not a pleasant sight out there but I just th thought I would document it anyways our side of the camper like the side where the door was was much night like we are very organized in our campsite and so um yeah, it was a little stressful to look out that window. So we just kept the curtains closed. And also it's nice for them to have some privacy and for us to have some privacy too. So this one says Yardsy. As you can see, it's just a four by six card. I use the Kelly Perky letter stickers and it says borrowed from the campground store for a $20 deposit. It's just like Yahtzee, but humongous. And I think I misspelled humongous, but that's okay. Now here's that fire and uh, that fire photo and I'm going to use this brilliance ink which I love for stamping on black and I always forget about it. So I knew that I had a Kelly Perky stamp that had a magical theme and I think it's like a Disney theme to be honest with you or it could be used for Disney and so I'm just trying to find the stamp that I want the most. I like I wanted to put like magical fire, but I wanted it to fit properly and not like lose itself into the into the fire itself. So I'm going to stamp it sideways here. And it's really sticky. Those uh, those stamps are super sticky. So thank goodness for the Misty. And I do have to restamp that and the Misty doesn't fail me. Look at that. 
No problem. Look at how many times I have to stamp that to get. I think the magnet was keeping it from stamping down properly. But that looks gorgeous on that black photo background. This is one of my favorite things to do in Project Life is to stamp right on my photos. And I totally don't do it enough. I need to do more of this. So now I'm going to spell out the word fire. And I am pretty sure that this stamp set is from the Scraptastic Kit Club. I think it came with a kit. And I'm just going to go letter by letter rather than trying to line up fire all together, especially given that these stamps are really sticky. They're sticking to the photo. They're sticking to uh, the platform. And uh, even after they're stamped, they're still sticking. So I just want to go slow. So I'm just spelling out fire. It's not that long of a word. I can do it. And as you can see, sometimes the stamp is pulling up some ink off of my photo, but I'm stamping over it, so it's okay. And you can just go back and fix it with a black marker, especially if it's on a black background like this. Oh, that Brilliance ink is awesome. I really, really enjoy it. So now it's just looking a little bit plain with the two words there, so I thought I would grab the stars that uh, go in the same stamp set. And I'm just going to ink those up with the same ink and stamp them right there. It just fills up a little bit of that space in front of the word fire and just adds a little bit of interest and pizzazz to my title on this one. <clears throat> Pardon me. And so that's a great uh, example of a stamp set that I didn't think I would use and then I ended up using. And uh, I think that... I'm going to be on the lookout for more stamp sets that I thought weren't my style or, you know, I don't go to Disney very often. So I thought a, a, such a magic themed one would not really work for me, but I really need to think outside the box, I think. So I have this Everything is Wonderful filler card and I want to put something outdoorsy on it. So I had pulled out some Lawn Fawn supplies that have a woodsy type of feel to them. You see a stamp set there. It's actually a Christmas stamp set, but I'm thinking about using the trees from it. And then this is the forest die. It's called Forest Border and it cuts these cute little trees and this die coordinates perfectly with one of the stitched hillside borders. That's one of the things I really love about Lawn Fawn is how beautifully all of their dies and stamps work together. So I am going to cut both of these and one of my favorite things to do with this Forest Border die is to cut it from two different pieces types of cardstock like two different colors of green and then have the trees alternate so that the triangular trees are one color and then the other trees are a different color so I'm actually going to cut this out twice I just went into my stash and I got some mint paper that I'm using it's just cardstock that I'm using for my hill for my grass that's going to go right up to the trees and so I'm running this through on my small die cut machine this is a cuddle kid which you actually can't buy anymore. It's discontinued. And I don't know why I'm having a little bit of trouble getting it started here. It's actually, see, it keeps moving on my desk every time I try to get it started. It doesn't usually do that. And so I cut one set of trees out of that very vibrant green and then another set out of this darker green. So there we go. I had to struggle with it a little bit. And now I'm going to make a mistake here and um, do the wrong thing. I basically did it backwards. So don't do what I'm about to do. So see how the hill will come right up to the edge of the trees and it'll look really nice. So I'm going to go ahead and cut off every other tree. And now what I should have done is put that, see, I'm doing it wrong. I'm putting the green one in front of the, the dark green one in front of the bright green one. That's wrong because it's all gonna look dark green now. So I basically defeated the purpose by doing this. If I had put the bright green on top of the dark green, every other tree would be bright green and every other tree would be dark green. And I am not going to realize that until it is, until now. So now I'm like, wait a minute, I so do not want to cut this again. So I just used my fingers to rub the glue right off. I just used Tombow Aqua Adhesive, which is not nearly as sticky as Tombow Mono Multi. And so 
it came off pretty easily and it's a water-based glue so it didn't it might have left a bit of residue but I, I ran my fingers over it and it didn't feel sticky so I thought it's not the end of the world if there's a tiny bit of glue there and as you see I fixed that up and it looks really nice with the three different shades of green together and I think that that adds a nice outdoorsy element to my filler card and I just want to make it so that basically I don't I don't want any partial trees that don't include the trunk because the trunk is what holds it onto the card so that's the way that I kind of arranged it so that if trees were hanging off the edge their trunks were contained within the card. So I think that looks really cute. I could have added a little sentiment on the bottom of it, but I just decided not to. I thought it looked really cute just the way it is, or a little shape or something, but I liked it just as it is. So I did hang on to the two scraps on either side of that tree border, and you will see those come back again. Now I have this Home Sweet Home stamp set from Kelly Perky, and I think that this came in, it did, it came in a Project Life kit. And I'm trying to find a place for this phrase and uh, I think it says home away from home and I'm not going to get it on this card. I'll, I'll find another spot for it but I, I don't want to forget it. I, I'm, a little, I'm a little nervous that I'm going to forget that phrase because it's perfect for a camper, right? It is your home away from home. And this one says, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. And I'm going to actually cover up the I think to myself part with my photo and the thing I love about Kelly Perky cards is that they are so beautifully designed that you can just add a photo and leave it as it is. You really don't have to do very much, which is really great when you're scrapbooking a lot of photos like I am today, or if you're just busy and just want it to be a smoother, faster process. And what that does is it frees you up to spend more time uh, composing a few cards and then have some cards be just plain, and, and that's really nice. Or you could have all the, all the cards be plain. Now, this card I thought was perfect, this blue one with the hashtags all over it. I have a photo of my daughter. She's all by herself with this huge field in front of her with playground equipment and it's frisbee golf course is, is what it is. It's a frisbee golf course. And she's behind the bathrooms, which is where the Wi-Fi was the strongest, all by herself sitting on the grass with her phone all crouched over. And uh, I thought that this card was a perfect place for me to make a little bit of a statement about social media, which of course she's being very antisocial there, not socializing with other kids at the campground at all. Um, it was hard. We were kind of separated from the other kids that were her age because we booked so last minute we had one of the less... Um, good campsites uh we were kind of in the crowded last minute people section of the campground and so uh there were no kids around where we were there were some kids at the campground but they were way far down closer to the water and she didn't get a chance to meet them so it was a little bit uh, sad for that reason. But anyhow, uh, see, here's another picture of her also using social media at the bathrooms. This is before she realized that the Wi-Fi is stronger in the back. And that's a picture of her in the front. So like I did before, I start by spreading out my photos and, and trying to decide which stories I'm going to tell. And then I find cards to go with each of those uh of those stories and sometimes it's really easy like I knew the hashtags really worked well for my story and then other times I have to dig and search to find like right now I can't find one for this particular uh, card that I'm looking for. It's a little bit trickier with the 4x6 because I have so much fewer uh, 4x6 cards and what I disappeared looking for there for a few minutes was some craft cardstock and I am 100% out of craft cardstock. Oops, broken ale. <laughs> uh, grabbing for that cardstock. Now this is not craft cardstock. This is a very unattractive color, um, but <laughs> I'm going to try to make it work anyways. It's close to craft, but it's a little bit closer to 
baby poop brown than it is craft. But anyhow, it is called brown sugar, I believe. It's one of the in colors from a couple of years ago from Stampin' Up. And I think that with the color scheme of that year, it looked quite nice. But on its own, it's just not quite crafty enough. I'm using crumb cake ink here. I wish I was using crumb cake cardstock too, so that I could do some tone on tone stamping. And I just took those trees they're from the Joy to the Wood stamp set from Lawn Fawn, and that those trees are one of my favorite things. I also have the die versions of those trees as well, like not just the coordinating dies for them, but I also have a freestanding die that cuts a birch tree. It's so nice. I love them. So I decided that I would make this look very woodsy by using craft cardstock and uh, stamping some trees tone on tone, and then I'm going to finally use that Home Away from Home stamp stamp that I was a little bit paranoid that I would forget. And so there we go. Check that one off my mental list of things to not forget. And I tried to just stamp those, a combination of stamping and how I'm positioning the photo to make it look not too much like those stamps are repeating the same stamp. So I tried to stamp it a little bit lower and then I'm also going to cover over one of those branches that makes it kind of more obvious that the image on the far right is the same as the image on the far left. Just covering up that one branch makes them look different so that's kind of nice. So there we go. I decided to mat the photo just because this page was look this particular card was looking a little bland and, and brown. And so I used just another card in the kit to use as the matting. And it's a nice pretty blue color that shows up elsewhere in my spread. So the journaling here. I'm just handwriting it and it says uh, having put so much of our own blood sweat and tears in brackets and there really were all three into the camper it was so satisfying to actually get to sleep in it I've been a tent camper my whole life so it was amazing to sleep in an actual bed I'm pretty sure that this is the first time I have ever slept in a camper while camping there were times that I have slept in campers in people's driveways, like when they had too many people staying at their house and some people had to stay in a cottage. I did that for a wedding once and also just another time, but I've never actually camped in a camper before, so it was awesome. Here's that picture of Liv again at the bathroom using the Wi-Fi, and I just want to bring some of that faux craft colored uh, paper into the rest of the page so that it doesn't just show up there in the bottom corner. It says, it's okay to take your time, and then I'm putting in brackets, when the Wi-Fi is strongest at the bathroom. So she would take these long, leisurely trips to the bathroom, and I know that she was just standing there Snapchatting, but that's okay. She's a teenager. We'll allow it. Now I have this photo of campfire in a box, which is something that I'm keeping a list here of just things that we did that either made it to the page or didn't make it to the page that I just want to make sure I, I, I'm thinking I want to do a list at some point, like a card that is a list of everything. And so I'm just keeping a running list. That's what that little thing is. And those envelopes, I don't know if I mentioned it when I narrated the beginning of this video, but those envelopes, the reason I'm using them so, um, like not, I'm not being careful. I don't mind wasting them is because they're not the right size. They're not A2 and uh, they're slightly off and they're a real pain to use. So I've decided to just use them as scrap paper. So that campfire in a box is something Scott prides himself on being a Boy Scout and uh, he can start a fire, but these campfire in a box, I guess they're being discontinued and the local hardware store had them on for really, really cheap. I think they might've been $2 or something. And they provide four hours of campfire without having to, you know, like, chop up wood and stuff so although you did have to do a bit of chopping it was really cool and interesting inside like it was all these like compressed it looked like they were logs but they were made out of sandpaper not sandpaper sawdust and anyhow it was the first time that we've ever used such a thing he got two of them because they were so cheap and it was really nice being able to just start a fire super quick and easy so I used the mint letters these are kelly perky letters that i've used elsewhere on other pages and then i just needed a question mark so i went into my stash and got a thicker that that 
was the question mark. It's a slightly different font, but that's okay. So I put cheating and then I put this made the campfire so easy. And I did put some underlines under the word cheating just to fill up the space there. I could have put like a little border stamp or something there, but I just decided to underline it just to fill it up quickly. I am outlining these letters just to give them a little bit more emphasis and uh, to anchor them on the page a little bit, especially where some of them are like right here where it's on a really light background and the letters themselves are light. It just helps them to stand out. And I'm using a 0.005 pen, which is the thinnest pen that I have. And because the word is outlined, I decided to outline the question mark, even though you're not going to miss that question mark, but that's okay. Now on this one, I plan to do quite a lot of journaling. So, uh, and I'm also, I also want to make it clear that this journaling goes with the burgundy photo that's right below it. It's a screenshot of the local fire department. So I did this journaling the other day when I was at work and I'm just copying it almost verbatim. Parts of it are verbatim and then parts of it, I'm just winging it. And so I'll read it to you. It says, uh, the campground was close to the local volunteer fire department. Having never lived in a community with a volunteer fire department, FD, uh, we were unfamiliar with how they worked. Shortly after midnight, we heard a siren go off and continue for quite a long time. I fell asleep despite the alarm, but what I didn't realize was that the only time Sophie had ever heard that sound was in the movie The Book Thief, when the city was invaded. I had known, had I known Sophie was fearful that a war was breaking out, I would have woken up and comforted her. The next morning, she was asking questions, and uh, that's all that fits on that particular card. And so skip forward a, ahead a little bit here in the video, and we'll pick up on the other side of that card, which I just flipped upwards, which is going to be a problem later on. Uh, so she was asking questions such as, if we died last night, how would we know? She was fearful that we were already in the afterlife because the campground was attacked the night before and we didn't realize it like in the movie Ghost. It's funny how movies can affect your outlook on life. We had a talk about how if she's scared, it's okay to wake me no matter what. Uh, I looked on the internet and discovered there had been a fire in a nearby community and the VFD were called to respond at around 12.30 a.m. And that matched up perfectly with the time that the alarm was going off. So just having an explanation for the alarm that wasn't a war happening was very helpful to put Sophie's mind at ease that we all weren't in fact dead as we were having that conversation. <laughs> it felt like I kind of dropped the parenting ball here <laughs> in this uh, circumstance. I probably shouldn't have gone to sleep not knowing what the alarm was because it was very loud and um, but nobody else seemed to be bothered by it nearby so I figured somebody would have been freaking out if it was something bad. <laughs> I probably should have comforted my kid. Anyhow, these are flip flaps and they are made by Snap. Actually, they might not be called flip flaps. I think there's another company that makes something called flip flaps, but these are the same things. They are, you can get them in four by six and three by four size and probably other sizes as well, but I have them in those two sizes. And they basically are an extra little pocket that attaches to your page protector and allows you to have a little flip flap. And the one that I have, for, it actually has the sticker along the side of it, which means that it's, it's going to open sideways instead of flipping up. And I wrote on it, assuming that it would flip up without looking at the flip flap. And so um, it, my writing is going to be upside down if it flips sideways. So I have another product. It's a Fuse product and it's called a Waterfall pocket and you're supposed to be able to kind of like layer a whole bunch of pockets and have them all flip up like a waterfall and uh, but I'm not using it for that I'm just going to I scored it with my trimmer and I'm just going to attach it somehow to my page protector 
I'll figure that out later. I'm pretty sure I can. I'm hoping to not have to use my, my fuse. And uh, I'll tell you what I did when I get to that. So here's the next bunch of journaling. It's sort of another story, but I decided to put it all together. Uh, the next day we were driving to Upper Clements Park, UCP, and the alarm happened to go off again right as we drove past the station. We saw various locals driving in and rushing to the fire truck, which was ready to go. We wondered what it must be like to have that job or what it would be like to have a family member who worked that role. We are so thankful for the brave men and women who serve our communities in this way. And... Yeah, so I just wanted to make sure that I included that part of the story because it was kind of, you know, something our kids are city kids, so they don't, I mean, we're in the suburbs, but they don't see volunteer firefighters very often. So it was a, a really learning, it was a learning experience. And for me too, I've always lived in cities. So uh, that was interesting that we all kind of learned together about about that. Just adding a roller date stamp there that says the date, which was September 2nd, and I'll figure out how to do the flippy flappy thing uh, later on. Let's have some popcorn. This is a Chicago mix, which is cheddar, cheese, and caramel corn. Yum. And this uh, pink card, I thought I would do a pig layout about bacon. Because look at these awesome Kelly Perky stamps. I adore this pig on a bacon layout. Like I love, love, love those little animals. They're so cool. So I want the pig to be facing the photo, not facing off the page. And so I'm going to orient it this way. And this is one of the few times that I am happy to have that little white spot there because it just works perfectly this one time. Not all the other hundreds of times, but this time it worked. You can see I've used that gold ink on that stamp before and didn't clean it very quickly. And it's it does stain, that gold ink does stain. But right now I'm using my uh, VersaFine ink, which d gives a really lovely image. And now I'm just going to perch my adorable little pig right on top and I'm gonna go at first I was gonna go with a dark pink just to but then I thought I'd go more subtle with a tone on tone look so I chose bubblegum pink by Mama Elephant. All of my pigment inks are Mama Elephant that's the only brand of pigment ink that I have. Oh I have a couple of extra ones that I just got different places like freebies and stuff but my set of uh, pigment ink is Mama Elephant. And I love this card just the way it is and I'm not going to touch it because I adore that little pig and I don't I want your eye to look at it. I don't want anything else to distract you from that. We cooked bacon over the fire, which you'll find out why when you hear the story about the propane leak. And so here I am on my next page and this one is going to be all our about our trip to Upper Clements Park, which is where we spent one of our three camping days. It's a nearby amusement park and it's kind of a funny little quirky amusement park. It doesn't have many thrilling rides, but it's very charming and quaint. And so uh, we like to go there. We try to go once a year. And I just have my bracelet there. I, I think that's actually Sophie's bracelet. And I'm going to incorporate it into the design of one of the cards. And as you can see, I have that Lawn Fawn stamp set out, which has uh, roller coasters in it. And so it's called Coaster Critters is the name of that stamp set. And I am going to incorporate that stamp set into at least one of these cards because I adore that, ad that cute little roller coaster. And so I had to print that photo up a little bit bigger. I think I said at the beginning, if you watched the first video, where I talked about how I choose to print my photos, uh, I knew that some of these two by two inch photos would be replaced as I go along. So this is one of those replacements. Normally I find cards for each of the photos before I start actually scrapbooking, but in this case I'm very enthusiastic about getting started with designing this top card, which I plan to put some roller coasters on. And so I'm just going to leave the picking of cards for later and start working on my top two cards. And so I'm just going to go and grab some white cardstock and cut it down into two four by six pieces that will be the cards for this one and I am going to make them into backgrounds but uh, 
first I'm going to do some stamping with that stamp set. I'm going to do that in the next video. We're approaching the 30 minute mark, so this is as good a spot as any to stop. So here are the pages I've done so far. Uh, as I mentioned before, there are some changes that I will show in the final video. You'll see uh, how everything kind of comes together and any changes that I made. But uh, what you're about to see right now is the page that I've been working on most recently that you've been watching the process for. So uh, take care and check out the next video, which is part three of my Project Life camping trip video. I will link it here on the screen as well as some other helpful links for you. Take care and have a great scrappy week and leave me a comment below letting me know what your project life process is like. I'd love to hear from you. Take care.